Okay, we are live. Woo! Hi, everybody. Well, once. So exciting. Yay! Hi. Steph, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Back from our shenanigans. Yeah, I do. Hey, so, um, hi, my name is Steph, Steph Traversa uh, of the Sea Raven. Um, here with. Hi, I'm Marissa Duvault of Whimsy and Fluff. And we're both, um, we are both costume designers and <laughs> way too, way too close of friends, um, and fancy dress life partners. And in these crazy ass times, we have nothing better to do than, um, share our copious opinions with you about all things fancy dress. Because we have a lot of them. Best way to sum up this series. <laughs> we have a lot of opinions. Um, <laughs> if you've seen the other episodes of the show, when we even, does this series have a name? Not yet. No. But we'll discuss that. <laughs> we will. As you can see, we usually go into this with little to no prompting. This is straight off the cuff. Oh, yeah. Straight off the the, the silky buttoned Renfair pirate cuff. Okay. Um, so, so as we're talking, so, if um, you're watching yes. us live and you have questions, feel free to pop them right into the chat and we can address them. Um Bearing in mind there's a delay. But otherwise, let's jump right in. That's so exciting. So what are we... Um, so today is Garb on the Gut. Woo! So... so explain? I learned a new term today called history yes. bounding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'd heard the it's term Disney term. bounding before, which is where, you know, you use your everyday clothes to create like an homage look to a Disney character, but it's not a costume. It's just your everyday clothes. The concept behind right, history bounding. It, what? Yeah. No, it's, it's specifically important for like Disney and places like that. I think we have a delay too. So sorry. About yeah. That. I mean, you um, know. yeah, what can you do? But I think it's specifically important for, like, when you're doing character stuff like that, because in places like Disney, they have rules about dressing up too much like the character. Yeah, right. You can't go to Disney World in costume. No, you can't. You can't go in your full head to toe Winnie the Pooh. They will escort you out because they think you're there to prey on children. Right. And, and or, or other people will assume things of you. And totally harass you. It is safest for everybody to stay away from that. So that is kind of how the, the Disney bounding came to be. A way to pay homage to your character without breaking the rules. So the concept behind history bounding <laughs> is similar. The, the idea is you take pieces from your historically accurate costumes and incorporate them into your everyday life and your everyday wardrobe and fashion. So mm -hmm. that is essentially what we're doing. We are history bounding. It has a name. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much um, because I feel like we've been doing this for decades now. Yeah. <laughs> actually this is just how I dress. <laughs> I mean, and if you're watching this, you probably do too. I, exactly. I, <laughs> I've been to so many things where people ask me, oh my God. And I have to say, no, I'm just, hi, it's, I'm, I'm Steph, it's nice to meet you. I'm just a ridiculous person <laughs> and a costume designer. I introduce myself as the crazy costume lady a lot. It solves a lot of problems, not problems, questions off the bat. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. You get to blur lines and be, you know, that's how like steampunk came into creation. How do we mix history with fantasy? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, sorry, I just, I think that the formatting on this is just a little bit That's weird. Okay. So so you just keep talking while I fix it. I'll keep talking. Oh, good, because I have opinions. Yep. Are you surprised? Um, I will say on the other end of history bound income, people, you might have seen in your scrolling travels, um, I think there's a few different people, but like there are, there's one couple specifically that does this blog about living life purely like Victorian era. Um, yes. so there are people who, t who take the history bounding to the full extreme. It's no longer bounding. They like live that life. Um, and I have a lot of opinions on that. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> um, so this is a great way to kind of like incorporate pieces of history that you love. Also, there's a lot of like specifically, I mean, weird costume nerds that happen to love this stuff. There are history nerds that get into costuming because of how much you love history. And that's so great. Um, but it is good to be conscious 
and aware of the history that you're pulling from. Since you asked me to go on a tangent, this is the tangent you get. I love it. Um, so, you know, when you're like living the purely Victorian life because you have a lot of ideals and standards and blah, 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 that's great. But like maybe be familiar with the ideals and standards of that time period that you're kind of encompassing and uh, emulating and all this crazy stuff. So it's not to say that once you put on a, a piece of garb to go out to the CVS or whatever that you have to like, you know, hand out cards, informational cards, telling people like, hey, I get to wear this because blah, 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 and here's my message. Um, it's just fun ways to bring those elements into your everyday life. It's great to be conscious about it and know where it comes from and all of that besides just how pretty it looks. But also it looks my pretty. tangent. So, okay, thank you. So thank I'm going to jump right in and start with um, the most common... Um, piece of garb that I incorporate into my daily life, um, which I do, you know, like I wear, um, is, is the skirt. Um, so this is, is an example of like, this is one of my steampunk skirts. It's, it's got, you know, kind of a vaguely Victorian feel about it. The nice thing about steampunk is, you know, they're, it, it's really open to interpretation. So nothing about this skirt is period accurate. So even if it were period accurate, I would still wear it exactly like this. I like to take an old fashioned skirt and a very modern looking top and pair them together because that makes it intentional. You're going out in public saying, hey, look at how anachronistic I am on purpose. People don't think, oh, hey, this person's wearing a costume. It's very intentionally an outfit. Um, also, these little bats on this shirt, I don't know if you can see them. They're little bats. bats. They glow in the dark. Oh my God. You're precious. You're so precious. Also, I had exactly this conversation with your sister one day. She has that beautiful striped skirt that she wore for steampunk yes. things. And she was like, I love, I was like, I'm obsessed with your skirt. And she said, yeah, I love it. I wish I could just wear it every day. And I was like, what are you talking about? You can. Here's my tea, statement necklace, that skirt. You're dressed for the day. She right. was like, I didn't know you could do that. She felt like it was breaking rules or something, and I was like, no, come to the dark side, Betsy. You're already here. Just immerse yourself in our ways. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, I actually grabbed, on the subject of skirts, a piece of fabric that I have a skirt made out of, and I thought this was the skirt. Nene, nee, nee, it's the piece of fabric. <laughs> but you know what? Um, it's linen. I don't think it's, like, pure 100% linen. It's linen from Joanne's from many years ago um but i see tons of ads it's really popular right now actually tons of ads on like facebook and places like that for like all these like plain linen tunics and things and they market it in my eye i'm like oh good foundation garments a chemise but really it's just like a dress and cottage core yep and they charge so much money for like a linen like petty for yep and he sell it as high fashion i'm like that's a petty for <laughs> so you know, I ha and I have linen skirts in different colors that I've made myself. It's at their great garb. They translate well because they're super comfortable. Um, but yeah, that's something that you can wear out and about in life and people will just go. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Steph, you keep talking. I'm going to change my mannequin and I'm going to put a different skirt and shirt on her, which is my other favorite <laughs> way to wear um, one of my, as opposed to one of my steampunk skirts, I'm going to put one of my Ren Fair skirts on her. Um, Ooh. for an example of how I wear my slightly differently styled Ren Faire skirt with a modern top. That is a great idea. I so mean, keep talking. thinking of, oh, let's no, backtrack a little bit. I was like, this is the first thing I'm going to say to people. And then no, it totally left my mind. Um, going into this history bounding garb on the go type of fashion. I think there's pretty much one hard and fast rule that I like to follow. Um, and it does not encompass, like, accessories are obviously easy, like jewelry, um, you know, leather cuff, a belt, things like that are very easy to translate. But actual garments, I feel like the best rules to follow is if you have one garment that is otherly, like one piece of garb, make the rest be plain and normal, <laughs> um, and you can get away with murder. So if you, if you have the, the fancy Ren Faire skirt, that's great plain white tee, and a pair of flip-flops. 
maybe not so fast, but you get what I mean. Yes. <laughs> You're good to go. Um, I think you can get away with a lot just doing that. I think it's when you start to add pieces upon pieces and then your mind kind of has trouble deconstructing that look, that really put together, going to a fancy dress event, going to a fair look. But when you take those pieces apart, not only does it make it easier for you to like create new outfits and stuff like that, but you can really actually see it in your mind's eye as, oh, this skirt is just a skirt. Right, right. And I love this skirt. I should get way more use out of this skirt. It makes me feel great when I wear it. And so deconstructing stuff like that, that is something you should absolutely be doing, not just for creating different kinds of fancy outfits, but um, to get more use and more love out of the stuff that you spend a lot of time like curating and spending money on and feeling great when you wear it. And spending money on, that's the ticket. So so I I'm like spending. to do with, the, yeah, with the, with the, you know, um, more like gauzy, linen-y, hippie type um, skirts of the Ren Fair. I like to do those with a tunic top. That's just the silhouette that I like to create. I think the other nice way to wear it is like up high with a crop top. Um, mm -hmm. but, but exactly like Steph just said, take one piece from your garb and then add modern to the rest of it. In fact, I had a sun hat to go with this outfit. And it's gone. <laughs> the room is not that big. I don't know where the sun hat went. That's very like fairy cottage for at this point. <laughs> Um, you could also think of it as taking just an, a plain, like, day-to-day -day outfit and taking one piece of garb and adding it to that, as opposed to, like, racking your brain. Right. Um, yeah. before we move away from this outfit, just one last thing that I would do to this outfit is I would add a belt. Maybe not necessarily this belt. I have a, I have a spiel about belts. You what? This is a good segue. Yep, segue to belts. I have something to say about belts, and this is a great segue. Boom. Done. All right, I'm going to sit back down. Tell me about belts, stuff. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so there are... Oh, actually. Not enough belts. Too much, never enough applies to me and all of my belts and centers and the like. So... Um, it's possible to have in your collection, like, normal everyday clothing that is, like, a really great belt slash waist and shirt and things like that. Um, I have a lot of great belts that are, like, this is just a very wide leather belt that happens to just be a great, like, put it around a dress, belt it in, and there you go. But then when you have, like, red fair belts, like, take that belt off and weigh it because of all the jingly jingly stuff on it belts. Um... They're great, but they're hard. This is a belt that I got at the last Fairy Fest. R.I.P. Fairy Fest. No, or but... until next we meet. Right. <sighs> until next we meet. Um, it is pretty... Oh, no, the light is awful in here. But it's pretty uh, Ren Fair looking until... And this is, like, a thing to be smart about shopping. You can detach the pouch... And now it's just a belt. Nice. As opposed to. So it has some versatility in it if you're afraid of all your jingly jangly pieces. However, I will say, fanny packs are a thing now. They're back. Again. So forget everything I just said. Where are those pouches? I, I do. I love them. So I personally, I'm not super pro purse. Like when I'm out shopping, um, that it just gets in the way. Like, it just gets in the way. Being hands-free I need like to be hands-free. the best. So I, yeah. I do like the belt that I just put on her. It's got pockets attached to it. Um, so I do tend to just put on a pouch, put on a belt with pouches, something like that, so that I can, you know, have my hands free while I'm shopping because I need, I need both hands for that. Because why not? Yeah, I can't believe I just tried to be anti-pouch or whatever. Also, I have a friend that works at uh, Apple. She, in, in the normal before time, she worked to the floor, um, and you have to have stuff. Like, you have to have either pockets or, like, a fanny pack or something, um, because you have a lot of, like, they're all free range in there, so they have to be able to have their, like, credit card machine and everything, like, on them. So she has, like, a rent for a belt with a pouch, and that's her everything. And people that she worked with were like, oh, my God, that, I need that. Yeah, I wear that a lot. She was trying to justify the 
It was perfect. I wear it a lot when I'm stage managing, because same thing. You need to have, you know, everything. You need to have Anyways, everything. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fashionable and Those practical. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. probably the best. I won't say the easiest accessory to uh, transition from fancy dress to normal dress, but I will say they're the most useful thing to transition. So... It's a good gateway. Start with a belt. It, it is. Practice with your belt. I mean, work your way up. You know, if if we if we want to start talking about, as I know we do, what to you know how to shop for your garb so that it is something mm-hmm. that you can then incorporate into your daily life. Which for me personally, you know, like obviously I have some pieces that are you know I only wear them at you know whatever steampunk events and Renaissance fairs and, and things like that. Like obviously some things just don't translate well into normal life. But this belt, for example, I bought specifically sure. because. I can wear it for steampunk, I can wear it to the Renaissance Fair, and I can wear it in my everyday life. So accessories in particular, those are some things to be thinking about, you know, when you're shopping for those kinds of things. Look for the things that are the most versatile. Definitely. Not only do you want to, like, mix up your outfits as much as possible, but you just get more use out of that stuff. It's hard to justify, you know... um, This shit's expensive. I was going to say let's continue with pieces, but we're on a roll. Um, it's hard to justify, like, leather armor, for an example. It's beautiful. I love it. Like, you you just feel so great when badass when you're wearing it. However, <laughs> it is very specific and does not translate. Corsets are beautiful, wonderful. I love wearing a corset. There's no way I'm wearing that corset to the stop and shop. Or no. a full day at work. You know, um, as we were, as we were like prepping for this and talking about this, I was like, all right, like maybe I can, maybe I can make that argument that, that you can wear a corset. And I, I put it on like with my jeans and like a tunic. And I was like, you know what? Hard. Nope. <laughs> nope. I think, I think the only it's time just... you can wear a corset in a non costume setting is if you are w- going to a fancy event, if you're going to like, like, you know, you've worn a corset to a friend's wedding before. Um, oh yeah. Things like that. Those are the times that you can get away with a corset in real life, but that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. And you can certainly get away with, um, underbust. Waist cinchers. More than. Absolutely. Waist cinchers. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, but I, yeah, it's a specific. I did have vault. on an outfit of, jeans a black tunic and a waist cincher and it was cute it looked good but as we've been discussing i've gained a lot of weight in the past year and so it was just uncomfortable (laughs) so i took it off yeah but it looked uh, really cute (laughs) you're precious yeah i oh man my weight has gone up and down in this year it's been officially a year Oh man, yeah. Facebook memories just reminded me today that it was a year ago today. It was a year ago today. That like the show I was in was like, we're going to postpone this for a while. Yep. A year ago today was my last day in the office. Yeah. I, yeah. Everyone is living that right now of like, yep, this was it. This was the time where we were like, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how. My my Facebook was- memories just popped up and it was a tweet that somebody had, you know, tweeted and I had shared that was basically saying to the effect of, you know, in in a couple of weeks, if this all blows over and and we say, um, you know, like there was this all this big to do for nothing, nobody got sick. That's the point. Like the point is to make the sacrifices now so that, mm-hmm. you know, it goes away quickly. And I was reading that this morning. And I was just like, oh god, we were so hopeful. <laughs> we were so hopeful. We were so hopeful. I have a lot of opinions on that, too, but we don't have to. We won't go there, no. We Suffice won't go it there. to say that anxiety and depression and lots of things happen for a lot of different people. I lost weight, I gained weight, I lost weight, I gained weight. And so, yeah, clothes fit differently. I'd so much rather just prance around in all my, like, flowy fairy garb. That's right. I've been wearing all the flowy <laughs> stuff. Right now. Yep. All the loose flowy stuff. It's fine. All the flowy things. Should we move on with show and tell to different um, different items of clothing? I have yes. some pants yeah. that I can explain. Um, so I love, these are probably my favorite pair of pants in the world. Are they the, the like um, tan linen ones? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were the 
Sarah Hair Choir. I knew she was gonna. Um, I knew those were about to make an appearance because she wears those yes. more than anything else. <laughs> These are. I. They have a hole in them right now. It's on the seam, so it's okay. okay. But like, they have. They're in the shop for repair. We're saying. Um, yeah, yeah. The top is this like stretchy jersey, and then the bottom is linen, and the very bottom of them, like the cuff of them, as you can see, has like. Not only like gathered into a cuff, but it's got grommets and ties on the side. So it is decidedly garb. Like I think I got this at the first, um, the first or second. Uh, oh my god! Watch City. Watch City Festival. I was like, "What happens in Waltham? Waltham W. Watch okay. City." Okay, I knew where there you were going are. with it. <laughs> it's been a while. Oh God. Um, so yeah, I got them there and I wear them all the time. They're like the perfect summer pants um, because they're pants. So there's no, awkward, no chub rub. No chub rub. I don't have to worry about wearing bike shorts underneath right. these. Um, they're flowy. They're airy. I wear these with a graphic t-shirt and go to work. In them. Like I love these pants. They're the most comfortable thing. I've worn them so many times, but I've also worn them to dress up so many times, especially as we have talked before, um, considering summer garb. Yeah. When you want something that is like comfortable and airy and light, uh, when you're in the warm weather or when you're doing something where you're going to be like walking around doing a lot of physical activity, um, you want like airy, flowy cotton and linen and natural fibers, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, these are my favorite pair of pants and I wear them in everyday life because they're comfortable, but also... They're pretty great. They're linen. They drape. Linen looks good on everybody. It does. That's my opinion. I, I am partial to bloomers, obviously. Yes. You know, that's... it's my business. I sell them. I make them. I sell them. So, you know. <laughs> but the fact obviously. that you have such a base of repeat customers, like, is a testament to the fact that these are, bloomers are everyday wear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cottage core. So, so it's funny because house. I sell them at two vastly different like I have two vastly different customer sets with the bloomers. I have the costume people and who, you know, like who buy them at, at Ren Fairs and, and steampunk festivals and things like that, who buy them to be mm -hmm. part of costumes. But then I also sell at um, like vintage markets and things like that because I, I exclusively use vintage materials. So um, the customer base there is very... I don't know how to describe it without like <laughs> no, and they're normal people space. like they're normal people it's not yeah. it's not people who wear costumes it's people who are who are buying clothing um and it's mm -hmm. literally the exact same you know um piece of clothing that one person is buying mm -hmm. to be a costume and another person is buying to be um a, a piece of uh, normal everyday clothing and 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 like stuff said in the summertime i live in them i live in them because okay. They're so, you know, they're light and airy. You, you know, when it comes to pants in, like, yeah. normal clothing, your options for comfort wear are leggings, which, you know, when it's 95 degrees outside, nobody wants that. Not ideal. Jeans, which, again, when it's 95 degrees outside, nobody wants that. Wants that. Or or linen. And, okay, yeah, fine. Like, yes, I will wear the linen pants, obviously. But I don't like to wear – I don't like to wear shorts. I'm not a shorts wearer. Yeah. Um, shorts are not a very comfortable option for a lot of people. And right also, up. as a person who is comfortable in shorts, like, it's hard to find ones that fit well that also – don't moon people when you come to work. Right. Like, so so that's hard. why I like the nice knee length bloomer. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, it's you've got some sure. some free leg there, but also the thung, the things that you want yeah. to be covered are covered, so. Oh yeah. I mean so anyway. my fancy linen pants that you just were like, oh my god, it's your pants. Yeah. Those are basically bloomers. Those are yeah, right. Bloomers, bloomers man, I'm telling you, bloomers. Oh, <laughs> dude, for real, bloomers. <laughs> I also, I love these because they have pockets. Um, yes. But this is a pair of pants that I wear for fancy dress all the time. However, were bought at, I think, like Midnight Sun, some like super hippie store. Um, but they're very flowy. And it's the same deal where like I would expect to see these more at a run fair than I would at um, like a local boutique and stuff like that. 
but it's very flowy and open. I think like they have the like side slits that come up to here because another super popular thing right now, you know, this is off topic, but um, harem pants yeah. are again everywhere. Like yep. I see ads on Instagram and Facebook for them all the time, different companies that sell like tie dye ones and, and you know, elephant pants and all these like cute kind of quirky designs and stuff, but they're basically, I mean, they're, they're, costume they're basically pants. garb. And they're super in fashion. So, like, if you have garb pants that look like harem pants, that look like that kind of thing, like, now is your moment. <laughs> they're so popular. Also, I just, I just want to, I just want to say one thing, too. You know, as we're talking about, like, the pieces of clothing that you can, like, get away with in your everyday clothes... If the last year has taught us nothing else, it's that you can wear whatever you want. <laughs> Please wear, wear whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. <laughs> like, I have this one pair of pants that are, I definitely, I made them. I definitely made them to be part of a costume. They are mm -hmm. the brightest in-your-face shade of, like, coral like, pink, pink velvet. I'm obsessed with these pants. <laughs> Like, I'm crazy oh, about those them. pants. Oh, my God. 100% made those to be part of a costume. Like, had no intention of those being a thing that I wear in real life. I have oh. worn them so many times over the course of the winter in public. Like, going to the store wearing them because yeah. no one cares anymore. All, no. like, propriety in that sense has gone out the window. Wear what makes you happy. Awesome. Wear yourself wear on the outside. Hashtag. This is for a reason. Hashtag wear yourself on the outside. It's an icebreaker. It's a conversation starter. Like people come up to me and say, I love your, like total strangers will come up and be like, I really love your outfit as if they've been compelled to, cause they just can't get over how like somebody wore something weird just out and about in normal yeah. life. Yeah. You know, um, I do have to say like, I wasn't always, you know, I didn't always wear myself on the outside. I, you know, when I was younger, I was very much like, Oh, is this appropriate yeah. to wear in public? You know, like, do, is this too costumey? But yeah. the more that I wore those kind of quirkier things and, like, borderline costume pieces out in public, I noticed so many people would comment and compliment on them. And I realized that a yeah. lot of people want to wear those things. They want to, you know, have that, yeah. that piece of clothing that makes them feel a little magical or whatever, but they feel like they can't because of those hangups of, is this appropriate? Can I wear this in public? Just wear it. And it's hard to break your routine. Like not everybody can get away. Like maybe you work in a place that has really strict dress codes or you go to school somewhere like that. Um, but once you kind of grow up in that, or you're just like, you know, anxiety is, is a beast. Um, so once you kind of live inside that bubble, it's hard to look outside of it and be like, oh, oh, I can like toe in the water it and it'll be okay. Like I can, I can do that. Yeah. That's fine. It just doesn't always dawn on people. And then they see you out and about in life and they're like, look at that inspirational goddess over there. Like we are, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> but like, yeah. Right. It just makes people so happy to to see that, like, oh, something unique. Right. So be that person that makes other people feel like it's okay to mm -hmm. be a little weird. Do it. Do it up. I've got a little, Do my, like, old. Do you have like, any old... other show and tell pieces? What? Go ahead. Nope, sorry. I was just trying to think of, of a oh. quote that I had seen. Let your weird light shine so oh, bright. Okay. Um, Shoot, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> we could just recite practical magic right Talk now. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> just gonna right. look uh, something up. Another show and tell. So the shirt that I'm wearing right now, we'll go to, we'll go to tops. Let's transition into tops. Um, the shirt that I'm wearing right now is a Moresca, like, I don't even know what you call it, the fairy shirt. It comes in every color of the rainbow. It comes in like a small, medium, medium, large sizing. I have it in like four different colors. It's so great. This is a shirt that I wear as a tunic, as a tank top. What's happening behind me? Um, it's it's great. It's super versatile, not only for different kinds of garb, different eras of garb, and, and fancy dress events and stuff like that. But like, I used to wear this to work and everything. 
I found it. It says, let your weird light shine bright so the other weirdos know where to find you. Ugh. That's how we live our lives. That is, that is how we live our lives. That's why I had to share that. Like, I had to share that quote because that is how I live my life. Let your weird light shine so bright so the other weirdos know where to find you. Anyway, I mean, sorry. The way that we became friends, because all I'm good for is tangents on this video series, apparently. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with that. Find your strength. No, this is right. strong. This one's on me. <laughs> um, we became friends because we were working on a show. I was in it, and you were a costume designer, and I did not want to be swinging a hammer during tech. I'm like, listen, people, I'm no good at this stuff. I don't want to try. You don't want me to mess this up. How about I go help the costume lady? Isn't there a costume lady here? And they were like, oh, yeah, you know how to sew? Go, go upstairs to there. And I did. And you were like, hi, here's a needle and thread. And I was like, okay. And something happened. And I was like, what a crazy random happenstance. And we looked up and our eyes met. And that was it. It was love at first sight. Like, <laughs> it was fancy dress love at first sight. And, like, we didn't look back. <laughs> what a crazy random happenstance. Right. <laughs> Uh, speaking of quotes. Anyway, we were talking about yeah, cops. That was top. And I totally derailed the conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> Derail. Um, I know. I'm, I'm a big derailer. Also, so I apologize for this horrible lighting right now. I don't even know if you can see me because of the yeah. vampire killing light. Um, yeah. So this is, I love these tops. Like, you want to justify a purchase of, like, I, I need five of these in all different colors. This is the top to get. Mariska makes a lot of clothing, I think, by the way. Um, speaking of, like, hair and pants before and um, and tunics and stuff like that that are very versatile both for garb and for daily life. They Yeah, like, they super do. I think, I think, <laughs> super do. Um, more than, like, almost any other, um, you know, widely available uh, costume brand, uh, the, the pieces that you buy from Mariska are things that, will take you the furthest in terms of versatility, like without question. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, as a brand in general, they're so great just because you can, you can look at somebody at a fair and be like, you are wearing a head to toe Mariska. Right. Like it's, that's how recognizable it yeah. is. So you can definitely take it to the extreme, but you can also take off the belt and the corset and the Spencer and whatever else you have and, and put like normal jeans on. And, and get, leave and go into normal life and be fine. Yeah. It's perfect. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about what are you wearing right now? So I'm wearing... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic sweater. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this is... I'll show you the back. It's open in the back. Obviously, I'm wearing it with a tank top right now. When I wear this to... Um, I, I got this at the New York... Um, fairy festival which fingers crossed we'll be there again someday um Oof. yeah so so if i were at fairy fest i would wear this with um like a pair of bloomers and nothing else because fairy fest happens in june late june when it's like you know 95 degrees outside and we're camping and it's hot mm -hmm. um so something like this is really nice because it keeps you nice and cool um, cause it's got the whole open back and it's, this top is actually very supportive. Um, but I do also wear it, you know, in, in normal life. Sometimes I'll wear it with a skirt. I've got jeans on today, but I do tend to put a tank top on underneath it. Um, when I'm wearing it like in the world, just because, yeah. you know, <laughs> I want to cover some more things up. <laughs> you like to be secure. Right. We don't need malfunctions happening. Um, anyway. but so um, this. And it is. It's silk. I'm going to step closer and I, yeah. I apologize that you're about to all get an eye full of my chest, but I want you to see the chest on this. <laughs> so it's it. The whole garment is silk. This is felted silk. Um, and then, yeah. you know, it just it ties in the back. It ties around the neck. Um, and then it's just got these lovely, beautiful drapies. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, it's gorgeous, so and I will also. Oh man! So at at New York Fairy Fest specifically, I think that's like the big item. By the end of the weekend at that festival, like half the women are walking around wearing that thing because they found it 
and and found it and they were not going back but it's everybody it's every size every shape every height and every age like i also like the last time we were there there were like little children running around in that and it is not a it's not like a break the bank item but it's not a cheap item no yeah right so to like buy something like that for a little kid you know a they're going to be able to grow into it because the sizing is so versatile but also like it's okay <laughs> like they can run around in almost nothing and it's not like yeah scandalous i and i will say too um, the the new york fairy festival i think ren fair is kind of in general and i experienced this a lot at the new york Fairy Festival, the amount of body positivity at events like that is really fantastic. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a... An encouragement, too. Currently, I'm a size 16. <laughs> and in the normal world, I absolutely would not feel comfortable traipsing around wearing nothing but this, you know, piece of silk covering my chest and, like, mm-hmm. nothing else. But at an event like that, no one cares. No one cares that you're a size 16 and you know, no. you have your entire back open. That's just, that's the world. That's the world. Yeah. And so and people are encouraging right. of it. Even like somebody walks by and like, Oh man, people walk by the booth where we were. And we're like, you ladies are gorgeous. <laughs> like, thanks. And it wasn't creepy. It was great. Right. Right. Um, everyone's encouraging of it and everybody feels really good about it, which is like the number one thing to like, you know, if you have that feel good swagger, you're going to look good. Right. You could be a size two or a size 20. It does not matter. Wear your fancy silk and, and be feel good swagger. Right. So, so this company is called Rayen Designs. It's R E Y E N Designs. You can Google them. Rayen Design Silks is the name of the website. Um, Steph's going to show you. I think, is that the like cloak that you got from them or the, the like jacket that you got from them? Is that not what yes. that is? Um, <laughs> actually, I have, I have three things because I can't pick and they're all wonderful. And I have other things. I have just a skirt. It's kind of like just the bottom part of your garment right now. Um, but it's a full skirt that goes all the way around. I have it in two different colors and it's it's great. I've worn those in regular life too. And that's another thing that people come up to me and go like, oh my God, that's beautiful. I'll be like, yeah, it's garb. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, but I think everything I own from that guy... I wear in real life, which is why I own so many things from that guy. Um, but we'll just give you a quick show and tell. So first of all, I have this beautiful hood. <laughs> it's kind of ominous and pirate looking, but I will say um, that the this is a, a raw silk, uh, like a silk noir, if you're a fabric person. Um, it's also kind of water resistant. So it's great when it's hot and it's summertime and you don't feel like wearing a hoodie or carrying an umbrella or whatever you do. Um, so, and this is very garby, but I have in the past worn it out of the house in like a black tank top and jeans just because I felt like it and it was there. Right. And no one commented at all. Totally got away with it. But the other thing, wow. Um, that I do wear all the time. This is a heavier weight. Again, it's from that silk guy. I can never figure out how to put it on. <laughs> it's like a jacket. Not a jacket. It's like a shawl. It's like a vest. Slash yeah. Duster slash. And it's got a hood. Um. I think I wear this everywhere. Like the year that I acquired this garment, I wore it everywhere for the rest of the summer um, because it's so versatile. Like when it's raining, I'm good as long as it's not, you know, copious thunder and lightning. <laughs> that was, like that. you bought it one of the years, you yes, bought it at good. Fairy Fest one of the years that it, oh. it was just rain the whole yes. weekend. It was my first year and it was nuts. We were walking around like ankle deep mud. And so I bought this like, the, this was the first purchase I made, and it was the best purchase I made. It kept me so comfortable. Um, and also, yeah, it's silk, so it feels good on. It breathes really well, and it wears really well. And then one more thing, back to, like, accessories and stuff like that. Um, I got this scarf, which is, again, like, the bottom part of your garment there. 
Um, it's just a scarf, but they showed me. So let's see if I can recreate. Feel free to tangent, if you will, while I make this happen. But they showed me how to kind of tie this up so that I can wear it like a duster. You can go on, you can go online and just Google like, you know, how to tie a uh, scarf to wear as a vest or something like that. It's, it's that once you know the positions where you have to tie it, it's really easy. Um, it makes like a super, super cute little vesty item. Yeah. I mean, this basically for this vest, you fold it in half, um, and fold it in half, half again, like the hamburger way. Um, and then I just tied it with a hairband and here it is. And it's just a great thing to kind of make you feel like you have an extra layer on. Sometimes it's hard when you put on tank tops and you're like, especially in the beginning of it being hot weather season and you're like, oh God, all of my arm fat is out. <laughs> or like, oh, is that too low a neckline? Um, just throwing something really light on over it can make you feel a little more comfortable um, and also just dress it up. I mean, sometimes you just want to have a little bit of flow. I love anything flowy. Right, right. Hashtag what we see next wear. Yeah, yep. Go with that. Yep. Um, so I think we should talk about outerwear. Oh, yeah. Because I wear, I have um, a half cloak that I got from Half Moon Traveling um, Cloaks. Mm. which are my favorite mm. brand of cloaks. It's, you know, like it comes to mid calf, maybe a little higher. It's 100% wool and it is the best for keeping you warm and dry. And, you know, for a while I was like, can I get away with wearing this very clearly Renaissance fair half cloak out in public? But finally I was like, you know what? This year, especially, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And it's the best. It's the best. Just do it. You won't regret it. <laughs> and take this from a person who has a favorite brand of cloaks. How many? They're the best. Gonna say that? You know more than one brand well enough to be like, not you, not you, definitely you. Yeah, yeah. I'm a cloak connoisseur. I actually... Tan tangent again yesterday so so my husband and my cousin and our friend have started playing Dungeons and Dragons together online and my friend's um partner is DMing for us and um I joked about how when we when we can finally play in person I expect everybody to be in costume <laughs> uh-huh and my husband jokingly said, because, you know, we have a group chat. In the group chat, he, he jokingly was like, okay, I'd like to put in my request now for a full-length blue cloak with this image embroidered on the back. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you think I wasn't actually going to do that? Because I'm going to do it. And then was like, I need to make cloaks for all of us. So I currently have, I'm almost done with the first one. I currently have, like, the amount of material in this room right now is, is a little out of control because I went fabric shopping yesterday to get fabric for five cloaks. <laughs> Which takes a lot of fabric. It takes a lot of fabric. you are not a sewer and you don't know. But, but I am a cloak connoisseur. Like, I really I am. Know. I have, I have yeah. like, nobody needs to own the number of cloaks that I own, but I do. And I will say the half moon one is the only one. Use. What? And they get use. You wear them. Right, right. Well, I do, but I will say the half moon one is the only one that I wear as like a coat because it is it is one hundred percent wool um, and it's very warm. So if you're gonna if you're gonna buy a cloak, I encourage it. I encourage you to buy a cloak, and I encourage you to buy one that doubles as actual winter outerwear. That's that's a, a great way to get a lot of bang for your buck on something like that. Half moon traveling cloaks. Definitely. Mm, they're great. They are. Oh, man. So much. I had a dream last night that you we were like walking into my house and you turned around and you were like, oh my god, I love your cloak. 
<laughs> that's was like, oh, am I wearing yep. a cloak? Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much. Um, that's pretty much that. Yeah, I wear that silk thing as a outerwear all the time. It, that's a three season outerwear, I will say. Yeah. Um. You have a lot of versatility in the, getting away with stuff like that. The other um, outerwear that I want to highlight, I'm just gonna grab it out of my closet. So hang on one second. Yeah. Oh, it's a reveal. It is, yeah, well, it's mostly I just forgot to take it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> the upcycled sweater coat. <gasps> yeah! So, these are, these are really, like, this is an investment. These coats are expensive. Like, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. But, you look at this and think, this is, you know, I can't wear this in everyday life. Like, this is an event piece. It's so not. I wear this as a coat in the fall. It's just the right weight. This is wool, so it's it's nice and warm. And every time I wear it, I get compliments just like everywhere I go, every time I wear it, all the time. Oh yeah. And this is one of those things that I was talking about. Compliments like crazy. What? Compliments like crazy and also like not just, wow, you look really great in that, but like, hey, where did you get that? <laughs> I need to know. Right. This, <laughs> People get decisive. So so I got this at Fairy Fest. All my best stuff came from Fairy Fest. Like, that's just, let's just talk about that. All my best stuff came from Fairy Fest. Um, yeah. So the woman that made this doesn't sell online. She doesn't have a Facebook. She doesn't have a web store. She just sells at events. So I'm not going to direct you to anything for her because it won't get you very far. But... Um, this is known as a Catwise inspired coat. Uh, Catwise is the woman who kind of pioneered the whole upcycled sweater coat movement. But if you, so if you just go into Etsy and type in, um, Catwise inspired coat, there, there are, I mean, the possibilities yeah, are endless. Yeah, upcycled sweater. Yeah, right, right. Um, but, but this... I think of all of my, like, costume wear, I wear this more than anything else. Um, it was also, this might be the most expensive piece of, like, garb I've ever bought. Yeah. Maybe. It's up there. Um, but it was worth it because people compliment it like crazy. I, I mean, it's warm and comfy and, like, the greatest thing ever. And it's clearly something I can wear in everyday life. And this is like what we were saying. This is one of those things that I think people see and think, oh, I didn't think that I could wear clothes like that in public, but I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't think that I, I couldn't pull that off, but maybe, maybe all I need to do is just put it on. Right. <laughs> and that's that. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Just put it on and feel good in it. Like, that's the most important takeaway is, like, you can feel okay spending money on this stuff and owning it and having it take up space in your life because you get to wear it and feel really great in it. And, like, that's the point. Right. If you don't feel great wearing it or doing it or going to it, what's the point? Right, right. I mean, we're at a point in the world now where just wear what makes you happy. Like... Life is too short. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Life is too short for boring clothes. <laughs> yeah, we keep circling back to this topic because it is important and also extremely true. Right. All That's right. It. Those are all the things um, I had to talk I about. Think, yeah, that's my that's my whole show and tell and all my life philosophies on this topic. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sure. All right. Um, so yeah, this was a lot of fun. This was good. The time stream of consciousness really does work out. <laughs> yeah, right. It's fine. It's great. I love it. All right. This has been fun. Okay. Um, as always, yeah. if, if you want us to elaborate on something that we touched on here, you can message either of us. I am at Whimsy and Fluff mm -hmm. on both Instagram and Facebook. Steph, tell them how to find you. I, well, first of all, who invited the moon moon? Sorry for that. Second of all, um, I am the C Raven on both Instagram and Facebook. Slide into my DMs at any time. I'm here for you. Um, Clearly, right. we have a lot of opinions, and we like every excuse to share them. So right, please. right. Please do. There's no question too big or small. All right. 
Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>